every time this telecast is aired, somebody will call and say, please pray for my son, my daughter. Please pray for my husband or my wife. My family members need God. They need to be saved. Can I tell you something? You need to get your chin up. They're about to get saved. There's a revival that's sweeping through the land, and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. They're not going to be drug addicts. They're not going to be gang bangers. They're not going to be prostitutes. God has his hand on this generation. Your children are coming in. Your husband, your wife, your neighbors, your family members, all of them, cousins, uncles, aunts, everybody, the people with whom you work, your neighbors, they're all going to get saved. There is a revival coming to this land from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God is at work, and he's about to do one great thing. We're going to see it happen before Christ comes back in the clouds of glory. Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, I'm Pastor Sam, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm so glad you joined me on the program today. I believe that here in America, we have the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our heart. We have the freedom to preach the gospel and to share our faith. And for that reason, I'm here today to tell you that Jesus loves you and Jesus loves America. God has a plan and a purpose for this nation in these last days. And I want you to stay tuned for the next half hour because I believe that God wants to speak to you from His Word. I believe today that your life is going to be changed. I believe your perspective will be changed as an American, especially a Christian American. So please stay tuned. In fact, if you have a friend or a loved one, call them now and say, look, you need to watch this program. You need to watch Miracles Still Happen. So get on the phone right now and call them and uh, get ready to receive God's best. We're going to go into a service where the power of God is at work, and that service is already in progress.
Thank you for freedom, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to know that in this nation of ours, there are many reminders that this nation was established on faith in the word of the living God. Hallelujah. And it is time for us to get back to those righteous principles that are set forth in the Word of God, a lodestone, a guiding star for this nation of ours. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. But if somehow in these last days we abandon our faith in God and just become a secular nation and forget our past, our rich spiritual heritage, we will have the epitaph on the tombstone of this nation. The wicked are turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. But I don't want to forget God. In fact, I want to call this nation back to God. I want us to seek the Lord until he reigns righteousness down on the United States of America. I want us to seek God until a Holy Ghost revival sweeps the length and breadth of this land and burns out of control and spreads like a wind-driven prairie wildfire into every community and hamlet and town and village and mega uh, megapolis in the United States of America. God send revival from center to circumference to America. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Did you know that as you walk up the steps of the building which houses the United States Supreme Court, you can see near the top of the building a row of the world's lawgivers. Each one is facing one in the middle who is facing forward with a full frontal view. And do you know who that one is, that one lawgiver that is the centerpiece? That one lawgiver is Moses and he's holding the Ten Commandments. Did you know that as you enter the Supreme Court courtroom, the two huge oak doors have engraved on them the Ten Commandments? Did you know that as you sit inside the courtroom, you can see the wall that is above where the justices sit, the judges sit, on the wall just above them is a display of what? The Ten Commandments. Did you know that there are Bible verses that are etched in stone all over the federal buildings and monuments in Washington, D.C.? Did you know that James Madison, the fourth president, who was known as the father of our Constitution, made the following statement? We have staked the whole of our political institutions upon the capacity of mankind to govern himself and to sustain himself according to the Ten Commandments of God. Did you know that every session, every session in Congress has begun with a prayer since 17... 77. Today we tell people you can't post the Ten Commandments in school. We tell judges you can't post the Ten Commandments in your courtroom. Why? Because somebody might feel obligated to obey them. I want you to know it's time for us to go back to our roots and say we are one nation under God and we believe that the Word of God is the comprehensive, infallible revelation of God to man. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise in this house. Everywhere you turn, you're reminded that we're one nation under God. Do you know that the woman who made our first nation's flag was a devout Christian? And Betsy Ross read in the Bible about a Gentile woman by the name of Rahab. And you know the story of Rahab. She was in Jericho when the spies came in and said, God is about to give Jericho into the hands of the Israelites. And she said, I want to strike covenant with you because when you come in, I don't want to be killed and I don't want my family to be killed. And they said, if you'll not tell anybody you saw us, but you'll come into your house 
and hang a red thread out the window, I promise you, you will be under the protection of divine God Almighty of the Israelites so that nothing will happen to you and your family. And she did just what they told her, and she was the only one that was spared when they took the city. When Betsy Ross read that, she said, we're going to put red threads into the flag, glory to God, that represent the covenant that we have made with our God. The crimson threads represent the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for our sins. You and I, as Americans, if you don't understand this, I want you to get your head around this today because there are a lot of people, the ACLU, the, the people today that are political revisionists would tell you this is not true. But every time you see old glory waving and you see those red threads, it is a reminder that we are in a covenant relationship of love and, uh, and faith with God the Father through Jesus Christ and the sign and seal of which is the precious blood of the Lamb. That's why we can say no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And any enemy that comes against us one way shall flee from us seven ways. The reason that the United States of America was able to step in to World War II and save the entire world from a madman named Hitler is because while our boys were over there fighting, mom and dad were here on their knees praying and not one person was burning the American flag. Amen. God bless America. God preserve and protect us and sustain us. Somebody ought to shout a big amen this morning. You know, as America goes, so goes the rest of the world. God has raised us up for a reason. We are to be a light to this world. Go to any nation under the sun, and you'll find three things. You'll find an American missionary. You'll find a native missionary that has either been trained in America or trained by American missionaries, and you will find Bibles and gospel literature that were printed in America and distributed absolutely free in those nations. Why? Because we know that the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. We have a divine mandate from God. We are on a mission to save the world. Amen? Hallelujah. I believe a revival is coming to America. Can I just preach to you a little bit this morning? And those of you that are watching me by television, I want you to know something. Every time this telecast is aired, somebody will call and say, please pray for my son, my daughter. Please pray for my husband or my wife. My family members need God. They need to be saved. Can I tell you something? You need to get your chin up. They're about to get saved. There's a revival that's sweeping through the land and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. They're not going to be drug addicts. They're not going to be gang bangers. They're not going to be prostitutes. God has his hand on this generation. Your children are coming in. Your husband, your wife, your neighbors, your family members, all of them, cousins, uncles, aunts, everybody, the people with whom you work, your neighbors, they're all going to get saved. There is a revival coming to this land from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God is at work, and he's about to do one great thing. We're going to see it happen before Christ comes back in the clouds of glory. And it is my opinion that the reason when you read the book of Revelation, you cannot find a nation that even vaguely resembles the United States of America is because before the Lord comes back, there's going to be such a move of the Holy Spirit. And so many of us in this country are going to get right with God that it will result in a virtual rapture of a nation. Hallelujah. I believe Jesus is coming, and I believe he's coming soon. And from Montana to Miami, there are millions of born-again believers that believe that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God and that the Bible is the Word of God and that God is still large and in charge and that God is God all by himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you proud to be in that number? How many of you today are born again, blood-washed believers in this house? How many of you believe that God's Word is true? How many of you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of all? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, give Him praise then with all your heart. Hallelujah. I believe that your heart is open and ready. I believe you're ready to pray with me. Would you pray this prayer? Now, don't just say it, but pray this prayer from your heart. I want to lead you in a prayer because I believe that the Holy Spirit will inspire me to lead you in a prayer, but make this prayer your own. Let's do it. Dear Heavenly Father, 
I come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, because you died on the cross to save me. And I receive you into my heart and into my life as my Lord and my Savior. And dear Lord, I want to live for you. I want to serve you faithfully. Have your way in my life, and I'll give you the praise forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God. I believe the Lord heard and answered that prayer. Now, I want to hear from you. Would you please call me? The number's on your screen. Call me right now and tell me about what you believe God's done in your life. We're ready to hear from you and ready to pray with you again. So please, call right now. The most important thing in a person's life when he or she receives Christ is to find the right church, a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. Well, I want to recommend to you Victory Tabernacle. Every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we have our praise celebration. And I mean, it is anointed, great singing and worship, and I always bring a message from God's Word. And we don't leave the house until we have a time in the presence of the Lord around the altar. So be sure to join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. The last Sunday in every month is our Miracle Sunday. So we have an additional service at 7 p.m. So the last Sunday of every month, 10 a.m., our praise celebration, 7 p.m. is our Miracle Service. During the week, you can find us here on Wednesday evening in our Family Enrichment Night service. We have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens and young adults, and I teach in the main sanctuary for adults. Also remember that Family Enrichment Night is fun and it's relevant and it's exciting. You don't want to miss it. We start at 7, but at 8.30, we're walking out the door. Thank you so much for joining me on the program today. And until we're together again, just like this, around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam Luke reminding you that at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. I'll be looking for you. Start this a little bit different. Oh, beautiful. For heroes. 
in the liberating strife who more than themselves their own country love and their mercy the mercy more than love oh, oh, America America make Join us as we pray for our nation, President Obama, and all our governmental leaders for divine wisdom, courage, and protection. Also pray with us for the safety and well-being of all the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, the Joint Forces all over the world, and for the peace of Jerusalem. May God bless America. Thank you.